This is Eugene Panrudkovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have a HP 625 laptop computer. It's not a pavilion, it's not anything, it's a HP 625 laptop. Uh, I think the HP designed this for business and educational users. So this thing is kind of built like a Volvo, a Volvo car from the mid 1980s. It's clunky, it's big, but it's built like a tank. All right, um, the screen uh, it has a cracked screen, so we're going to show you how to replace a cracked screen on it. And it's really tough to get the screen out on this because you can't get the bezel out. Let me show you what's what I mean. The screen bezel it's thicker on this laptop, so you can't push it out and up from from the computer without disassembling it. So you pretty much have to take the whole laptop apart to get to it. And since it's uh, built like a Volvo, there's a lot of work to get to, to disassemble the laptop and to get to the screen. But we have a cracked screen. We need to replace it. So I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, you need more tools than usual for this laptop. Let's go through them. I have a kitchen uh, butter spreading knife. So it's basically something with uh, not too sharp, no serrated ed edges, and kind of a kind of a curved ending, and that's to pry open stuff. I have a pair of metal tweezers to remove screws that are stuck, an exacto knife to remove rubber screw covers, and an electronics screwdriver. For the electronic screwdriver. I have a standard PH1 bit that will remove most of the screws. And for some reason, uh, in this type of laptop, HP likes to use screws with a Torx head. Torx is spelled T-O-R-X, and you need a special bit for these types of screws. And this bit is called a T7 bit. Torx, T stands for Torx, and 7 is the size. So you probably need to either go to an electronics or computer parts store or Radio Shack and ask for a Torx T7 bit. Most likely they'll sell you a whole set of Torx, Torx bits. All right, um, the last thing is another prying tool. Uh, this is a special prying tool, but you can just use a guitar pick. I'm not sure if we're going to use that or not, but we're going to have that just in case. All right, so the first thing we do is flip the laptop over. We're going to do some work on the bottom. And before you do anything, remove the battery so you can work safely on the laptop. You remove the battery by sliding these two levers in and put the battery on the side. Now I see, you see I have some orange dots and I'll show you what those are for. So this laptop on the bottom has just one big giant cover that covers up all the screws and all the components. And this one has four screws. So we release these four screws. Like so, we use our Phillips bit for that. And we push the cover up and out. So now we have all the components that we see. Okay, there's a lot of screws to remove on this laptop. Some of them use the Torx head and some of them use the Phillips head. So what I did was I put an orange dot where you remove all the components, all the screws. So pause the video right here and go one by one and remove all the screws that you see here. Now, uh, the service manual says there's a, supposed to be a screw here, but I didn't see it. But in your laptop, you might have a screw here, so remove this one. For the hard drive, there are some screws there, but you do not need to remove any screws securing the hard drive. All right, uh, next thing we're going to do is once you remove all these screws, the optical drive should be free. So we're going to slide out the optical drive. And then we see three more orange dots. And also when you slide out the optical drive, I forgot to put orange dots 
in these two screws. So we have to remove these two screws. So what I'm going to do is put the laptop down so I don't lose the screws. Okay, one and two. All right, so once again, don't forget to remove these two screws right here. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do on the bottom is we need to remove the Wi-Fi antenna cables because we're going to thread the Wi-Fi antenna out. So we lift it up with our tweezers and it should just come out and we kind of free it up a little bit so they're easier to thread out. All right, next what we're going to do is flip the laptop over and we're going to start removing the top parts. The first thing to go is the check pad cover and what you do for that if you removed all the screws successfully you can slide it up and lift it up and then there's a little ribbon cable that you have to release. You can use your fingernails to lift up the tab like so and you remove the touchpad cover. All right, the next thing we want to do is remove the keyboard. If we did our job correctly, we can just lift the keyboard up and we do that with the X-Acto knife, just switch in under there. And right away, I feel that there's one screw here that I didn't get to. So we're going to take a look on the bottom and see which screw I didn't get to. And sure enough, there's another screw on the motherboard between the fan and the heatsink for the processor that I didn't get to. Okay, so I'm going to remove this screw right here. Okay, so right here is where my finger's pointing at is where this extra screw is that I didn't see before. So put it on the side and now the keyboard comes out easily. Uh, for this laptop, if you feel something's not giving, most likely you forgot a screw. So don't try to force it. Double check to make sure you got all the screws. Okay, so what I did here was I slid up. You can see you got a good angle. Was there's a tab that you push up. So you push up the tab and take out the ribbon cable. So it goes like this and it goes out like this. Okay, so we put the keyboard to the side now. And the next step is there's some screws on top that you have to remove. So we're going to do that right now. There's quite a few actually. So there's, we're going to start from the bottom and go to the top. There's one. Just follow where my screwdriver is going and just follow along with me and remove these screws. So, so far we have three. Okay. Okay, go to the next row. We have four. Six, and we're going to triple check to see if we're not missing any screws here. So, so far it looks good. I don't think we're missing anything. Triple checking again. All right, and before we lift up the top cover, there's another ribbon cable that we have to slide out, and that goes to the power button. So we move these tabs up and slide out the ribbon cable. All right, now comes the next fun part, is where we're going to remove the top cover, and hopefully all the multiple screws that we need to remove have been removed. So let's see. We lift it up from the bottom. So, so far so good. Keep lifting it up. I see anything stuck just and 
around well and the top cover comes off. So make sure you remove five screws from the top. Do that and remove this ribbon cable. Alright, now the top cover is off. The next step is to remove the screen assembly. And in order to do that, we have to loosen up all the cables that go to the screen assembly. And that includes the wireless radio cables that we freed up from the bottom later. We unthread those like so. Next goes the, I assume this is the microphone cable, but I can't be a hundred percent sure. So we lift up the tape like so. Gently pull it out of its connector. Loosen it from the mounts. And finally, we have to remove the video cable. So we push it out like so. And then we use our tweezers to loosen it up and gently pull it out. Okay. Now you notice that there's a ground from the video cable going to the screen hinges. So make sure you don't pull it too hard and you break this ground wire. Alright, next we're going to remove the screen hinges from the bottom assembly and they're held in by four screws on each side. So we remove these four screws on each side. Okay, as much as you can, try to keep the screws that you remove in order in separate piles so you know which screws go where because by the time you're done removing everything, you're going to have 40, 50 screws that you need to know which ones go where. Okay, so for these, we're using our Torx bit. Like so. And almost done with this. Now, uh, when you've done removing all the screws, Make sure your screen is resting on something so it doesn't just fall back on you, like it almost did with me right now. Okay, one, two. Plan to spend about two hours on this, so. This one is not easy, but the job has to be done. And I assume this one is in a lot of institutions, corporations, and schools, and screens break a lot. Okay, so we loosen up all the screws, and we can remove the screen assembly. Okay, we can put the arm assembly on the side for now. And let's take a look at the screen assembly. The reason we had to do all this work is because of this thick bezel. So before you even start anything, make sure that you have this same bezel. Sometimes the bezel is thin, then you can just remove the bezel and get to the screen. But for the 625, you have a 625, you'll have a thick bezel like this, most likely. Okay, so the next step is to remove this troublesome bezel. And it's only secured by these two screws on the bottom that have rubber covers on top. And so we use our exacto knife to remove well then a rubber remove the plastic covers. Sometimes they're rubber, sometimes they're plastic. Sometimes they're a mystery material. All right, so then we remove these screws here. Notice that these are Phillips again. So we have to keep both of our bits handy all the time because you never know what's next. And we use the tweezers to remove one screw and 
two screws. All right, so the bezel can be snapped off next. Okay, this is the next hardest part. What I can do is go with my fingertips on the screen side and gently start lifting it up. I can tell this one's going to be tougher than the most. And we might need to use our prying tool after a while. So snap it up as much as you can. And then after that, we're going to try our prying tool from the other side. Okay, so next we're going to try our prying tool. Let's start with the knife. Keep track of all the screws. So let's see if we can use our knife. There's a seam that opened up. Well, knife didn't work as well. Next we're going to use the blue prying tool. See if we can get it out. There we go. Okay, what worked is if you can get it in and kind of lift it up like so. You can use a um, guitar pick. Or let's try it with a knife. Just the same thing. Okay, that way it comes up easy. So slide a knife in under and go around. With this, you have to experiment and try different things and work to see what works best. Okay, so go around with the knife. Like so. Okay, and we're almost done. We're almost to the bottom. And let's try our same trick with the knife on the bottom of the screen assembly. One. Almost there. And let's go around here. So this is not easy, even I'm having trouble with it. So take your time. Just work the bezel out. So eventually, try not to break the bezel or any cables. Just gently work it out. Okay, now the screen is assembly is open and you're ready to get to the screen. Now, for this type of screen, you have screws that are attaching it to the metal mounting brackets on the side, and we have to get to these screws. And we need to find some way to tilt the screen forward to get to these screws. So what we do is remove the top metal mounting bracket screws, like so. One. And there's one screwed up by tape, so we remove the tape. And we go to the next one. Like so. Okay, we tilt the screen as the screen forward over from the screen assembly. We can get to some of the screws, but the next trick we want to do is we want to loosen these screws, the hinge screws at the bottom. Um, right, as soon as I say that, don't forget to tighten them back up when you put everything back together. And trust me, usually putting things back together, if you keep track of your screws and just follow this video backwards, it's usually easier to take it apart. Okay, now we tilt the screen forward, and we have another surprise. And the surprise is that we need a pH zero bit along with it. That's a smaller bit than the pH one. Because these screws are smaller and we need a pH zero bit to engage these screws. So we get our pH zero bit and start removing the screws one by one. Like I said, this thing is built tough. And that if the screen breaks, you still have to take it all apart. Because the screens are all the same. Okay, so we take four screws out of each side, like so. Okay, so we have screws on this side. Now notice how I'm holding the screen, one finger behind the screen, so that it doesn't get loose, and I still have access 
to the screws. Now, a different way to hold it is to lay it flat on the bottom, lift it up with the finger, and just go one by one on these side screws. So there should be four on each side. Almost there. All right. The screen should be used for the screen assembly now. We lift it up, put it tilting backwards, and gently tilt it forward. And so far, this is the only easy part of the job, where the connector is and the cable is loose, so we can have space to work with the screen. Now we have to remove this connector, and this is it's an LED screen connector. And we do that is we lift up the adhesive tape on top, and then there's some adhesive on the back of the video cable on the bottom. We lift up this adhesive and we pull the connector back and it comes out. All right, now we're going to get a brief lesson on the connection. Now, the biggest source of trouble that I see from people replacing their screens is they don't put in the connector properly and the screen doesn't work. In most cases, it's not a big deal. You just get to the connector again, take the screen assembly apart and get to the connector and redo it. But as you saw in this case, it's not quite easy to do that, so it's better to do it right the first time. So when you slide in the connector, make sure you feel a click. And I'm going to give you a close-up of what it looks like. Hopefully you'll get a good focus. Okay, okay this is as good a focus as we're going to get. So make sure that it's properly engaged, it's in all the way, and you don't see a seam, like a op small opening between the screen connector and the cable connector. So pause the video right there. Okay, this is good focus. Pause the video right there, and make sure your connector looks like this when you're done. Okay, so let's take a look at this screen. It does have something a little bit unusual about it, and I'll show you. Okay, this is a standard 15.6 inch LED screen as of mid 2011. This is the most common type of screen out there, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding this screen. So it's LP156WH2 and the part number you need. Now the thing I noticed about the HP625 laptops is that it has a matte finish, so it's kind of a rougher finish and it's not smooth. Now when you order a screen, most likely you're going to get a smooth or a glossy screen unless you specifically say you want a matte screen and they specifically say that they have a matte screen. But a glossy screen will work with this laptop and most likely you'll get a glossy screen and the glossy one is more readily available and will save you money. Okay, so now for the screen surgeons part. We as screen surgeons also saw this screen. You will get a glossy screen from us. Um, typically we do not stock matte screens and we lost focus. Okay, and our, our focus is back. So you will get a glossy screen from us, but when you order from us, what you will get is free email technical support and you might need it on this laptop and also compatibility guarantee. The screen we ship here is not compatible, we'll replace it at no charge. Okay, uh, and to order a screen from us, go to screensurgeons.com and click on buy a screen and then you'll follow the directions there. All right, so let's talk about putting putting the screen back in. So basically, you go slow and reverse the procedure. Make sure you tighten these hinge screws or after a while your hinges will break on you. 
Snap on the bezel, put on the screen assembly, and just start putting the screws in in reverse. Now, another trick that I find is useful is when you put on the top cover and the keyboard and the mouse button cover, when you flip it over, don't start putting in all the screws right away. Put the battery in and test the laptop, make sure it works and turns on. So that way, if there is something wrong with the procedure, at least you don't have to put in, remove all the screws you just put in. So you only have to do half the work. So test the laptop as soon as you can. All right, um, that's it. Um, this is a HP 625 laptop screen replacement procedure. My name is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the laptop screen doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you very much, and have a good day.